I'm starting to get the feeling that we may not get protection from the bloom. We might, but we might not. And it is within my power to get these samples. I can do it. I think I should. All right, let's try to get some of the samples here in the bloom. I'm just going to activate the speed thing and just go real fast looking for new locations and samples. Let's go. I know there's a couple down here and then one off to the east. Need fan dust? No. Would love to read that description, but sorry. Abandoned base is what it said. That's interesting. Quiet clearing. I think we're heading into a cave that we can dive down into. Metal traces. Um, hmm. Let's go down into the cave. I think we'll be safe down in it. bubbles. Curved walls streaked with cascades of green bubbles, all glassy and sickly green in the light of the suit's headlamps. Oh. Did. Accidentally closed out of it, I think. Then give me a bit of oxygen. I guess I'll use up two of them, huh? I, I think we've already sampled it because it didn't have question marks for the name. Although, honestly, I don't remember sampling it, so I'll just keep one just in case. Metal seal. Corroded into the tunnel mouth, this seal is stuck fast. The only way in would be to cut straight through. Ah, so once again I need some sort of cutting apparatus, just like that place around the East Reef. It's sealed shut. Did Manet do this? It looks... older. This has been here a long time. It's... It was here before Manet? That's really odd. Are there humans or something else? I don't know the history of the studies on this planet. Okay. I don't know if a sample is through there. If it is, we can't get it right now, obviously. I think it is worth getting these. I think I'll recover more oxygen from them than I'll lose in the time getting them. Uh, let's go down here. Samples. Do they give me oxygen if I use them? Yeah, they do actually. Mm. I can't choose where I want to go. Where do I want to go? I guess I'll go up here. Uh, let's get some speed.
burn hole. It's interesting. So yeah, that just... Oh, we haven't gotten this one either. Toxic waters. We got some safety over here. Should be able to get some good samples um, of things to give us oxygen. Yeah, if you utilize all the resources you get, it's not too bad. Just move fast and don't read the descriptions, unfortunately. Spear fragments are really good for oxygen. There's a second one. Yeah, these give me oxygen. No, the nest workers don't. Get some speed. Let's get the dust. Did I see a way to go down right from here? Yeah. Can't see it from the other place, but it's here. Ridge outcrop. Should have done a speed up. My bad. Oh, this looks... This might be good, actually. I think this might be a sample place. Dead fan, yes! Research base now. Can we go to the west at all? Doesn't look like it. What is this? Bloom bubble. I think that gives us oxygen. Let's get into the base, a little safe safety bubble. Common they are. We've definitely gotten bloom bubbles before, right? I'll still keep one just in case. Why not? Yeah, just use up this fan stem. <laughs> Undo all her research. Yeah, can I continue like south from here? Uh, that's just another part of the base down there. No, we can't go south or east from here. Is this a sample candidate? Uh, oh, just boom bubbles. That's fine. They're good. Man, 
man, this is... This is stressful. Also, I think this is another sample. Yes. Any of these good for... Oh, wow, that gives you tons of oxygen. And we can use up one if we need. Okay, um, I think this is good for now. We're pretty far away from the other one. There's like two down here and we've got them now. The other one's pretty far away, so let's get out of here. I'll keep one bloom bubble on me because I'm sure we're going to want it for oxygen. Nesting weavers, we have theory and sketch. The pieces of weaver nest we found offer an insight into the weaver's protective behavior. Wrapped in its threads are thousands of weaver eggs. This suggests that like ants or termites, weavers are a eusocial species, with many generations of weavers protecting and maintaining a singular productive female. These weaver queens must be somewhere within the active weaver nests, protected by layers of silken threads and weaver workers. Nest fragments also reveal that the weavers farm their own food within the nest structure, carefully maintaining tubular fields of microbes, which, through the weavers' careful cultivation, seem to produce oxygen rather than the toxins that poison the bloom. How can this be possible? <laughs> this is weaver not to scale. Yes, they're quite small. Bloom fan theory and sketch. Study of a piece of bloom fan stem reveals that below the sand, a bloom fan has four jointed legs and a head with a circular mouth. So they're animals. Uh, using these, the bloom fan scrapes through rock and sand in order to extract minerals and biological compounds. Bloom fans may feed on the roots or even the buried eggs of other bloom species. This source of nutrients, when supplemented by the oxygen gathered through its tail fan, which is in fact more of an external lung, is enough to sustain a bloom fan for a long period, especially due to its mostly static lifestyle. What this also suggests is that there may be a larger subterranean ecosystem which remains undiscovered beneath the bloom. Is this where life has retreated to in these toxic conditions? Yeah, it looks like a, a huge fan. Looks like a plant. But it's actually an external lung of a creature that lives under the sand. Okay, so we got two samples which were around here somewhere. So now we have one up here. Hmm. That could be inside of that, like, metal blocked lab place that we couldn't get through, but probably not. We. Hmm. Like, I think we'd have to get there by going through some sort of a cavern, because there's there doesn't seem to be any direct path there. Maybe I'll start from here, and instead of going down this way, since I think we fully explored everything down here, I'll go down this way. Wish me luck. Probably grab this sample, actually. 
Sphere fragment. Yeah, that'll be really good. This is the way that goes the way I want, right? This is going to go more to the east, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, actually, I should grab those samples. There's a place we haven't been. And there's a bunch of places we have been. I this zoomed in. I'm not actually sure where we are in relation to where I want to be. I think I should head that direction. I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Ooh, I see a cavern over here. Yeah, that's the place we need to be. We can't get there directly, right? Yes, we can't. Yeah, there is that cavern directly west of us, which I think is the one that had that area we couldn't get through. So maybe we can't get this sample. I'm not ready to give up just yet, though. Probably is that, though. Being realistic. Yeah, going east isn't going to get me anywhere. Okay. I'm going to check the map. So that is definitely the area where we were. Pretty dang sure. This map doesn't exactly look like what it does when you're down in it. And... Hmm. There might be two cave entrances. I feel like the cave entrance we saw that had the metal structure we couldn't get through was closer to, like, here. Whereas the one that I think will lead here that we saw on the other side was more around here. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go hook around here from this big thing, like go uh, southwest from the Bloom Way Station. And then once I'm past this big thing, try to go as east as possible to try to get in here. Let's go. Yeah, so now let's try to go as east as possible. I think this is that cave that we did before. Because we've already been here, right? Yeah, that is, that is totally it. Okay, so I don't think we can get that sample yet. And that sample is what? 
bloom froth. The highest levels of toxicity surround this hole in the bloom's central ridge. If we could get below this point, we could sample the bloom's source. Ah, the bloom's source. I have a feeling that might be why it's behind lock and key. I think that's a big mystery that we might have to wait to reveal. Because I feel like there's something special about the Bloom's source. Like, there's, there's odd things about this planet beyond just that life is really interesting here. I mean, that's not, that's not odd or weird, really. It's just really interesting. But there's something going on here. And I think this has a lot to do with it, probably. The Bloom. So, let's head for one of the ROVs. Uh, this one seems to be closer than this other one, so let's go northeast from the Dusk Slopes. I still have the sphere fragments on me. Oh well. Debris trail. Glinting debris from the disabled ROV traces back into the sand. Volcanic outcrop. Unmistakably basalt, formed in some volcanic trench eons ago, this outcrop is outlined by the faint light of Gliese 667cc's suns. We have a split. Let's go right. Eastern plain. East of the ridge, a small rise opens opens into a flat plain of dimpled silt. Silt plain. A featureless expanse lit flatly by the suit's lamps. Bubbling sands. An occasional silver bubble breaks the surface of the flat silt, carrying a cloudy trail of sediment behind it. There's creatures under there, isn't there? Sediment trails. Repeated trails of unknown creatures mark the sand, wandering back and forth across the rippled surface. Cold water seeps. Bubbles of methane trickle out from beneath the silt, creating silvery columns wreathed in sand. Oh, it's methane. Pockmarks. Ahead, the seeps have created small craters in the seabed where brine is gathering in clouded pools. Whoa. That's the brine? That looks really cool. Brine pools. A shimmering landscape of ghostly pools stretches out in the lamps. The dense brine sitting in the craters like undersea ponds. Yeah, that's a real thing, by the way. In case you don't know, I've seen some um, nature documentaries that show footage of brine pools underwater and it's it's like a pool of water underwater it's really strange brine pools the methane seeps the methane seeps here must be forming them the pools themselves will be toxic and also anoxic let's navigate carefully they're beautiful. Fog-skinned puddles sunk into the seabed, but they are dangerous. Looks like our whole UI is glowing now, and the music's so different. Uh, are we going to directly cross over a, one of the brine pools? That seems like a bad thing. Sandy rise. The seeps imprint the geological patterns of the underlying rock into the silt forming both deep pools and untouched rises. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's not too bad. It just starts to hurt our oxygen. Kind of like being in the bloom. 
sandy rise. Between the pockmarks of the pools, the silt plain carries the marks of the local creature's patterns of activity. What are those? They're gathering around the brine pools. Bristling fronds. These swaying fronds, are they a colony or a single creature? I'll start recording my observations. These feathery fronds are growing along the edge of the brine, waving their matted leaf-like limbs through the water. That's a totally different creature, crab-like creature. These crawling creatures seem to keep to themselves. Let's keep track of where we find them. This crab-like creature is moving slowly across the seafloor with a large translucent crest protruding from its back. Bristling fronds. Each of the many limbs of these branching creatures is carefully dipped into the brine pools one by one before pulling back. Huh. Bristling fronds. Occasionally this creature will sweep its limbs back into the hairy mass of its body before thrusting them out again. What is it doing? Oh, this music is so... I don't know what the right word is. Stirring? It's kind of epic? A little bit concerning, also. Frond pools. The waving shapes of complex fronds caress the surface of the pools, sweeping the brine into wispy shapes. Crab-like creature. On closer inspection, the large trans translucent crest appears to be a gas-filled organ or bubble of some kind, rising from a slit in the shell. Glistening bubble sample candidate. A mucus bubble sits on the silt shed from the back of the bubble-skinned creatures which are trekking the perimeter of the pools. Mucus bubble. A multi-chambered mucus bubble found on the ocean floor. Frond patterns. While some pools transition into bare sand, others are choked with fronds. Bristling fronds. The thick hairs of each frond seem to be mottled with a reddish substance. Does it grow there, amongst the hairs? I saw a crab-like creature just at the extreme end up here, but it's off, off the map now. Could wait for it to come back, but I also might be able to go around if I go up here. Pool Network complex pattern of pools fills the seabed, shimmering with toxic chemistry. Methane seep. Among the pools, a pillar of shining bubbles rises up towards the surface. Ah, oh, there it is? Actually, no, that's not it, because it's not moving. Bristling fronds. It seems that the substance caked into these creatures' hairs reacting to the brine somehow. Perhaps it's helping them feed. Microbial mats. Bright orange carpets of microbial growth gathered beneath the waving fronds stretch away from the pool. We could sample them here. Brine mat, an orange bacterial mat sampled from beside a brine pool. Sandy rise, from the slight elevation the gleaming surface of a huge brine lake can be seen out to the east.
not a brine pool, but a brine lake. Frond colonies. The dipping motion of the fronds as they filter the brine creates a hypnotic sense of motion along the edge of the lake. There's the creature. These wandering creatures noisily chew away at the rock and silt of the ocean floor, filtering it for nutrients, perhaps? Hmm. Could be kind of dangerous to go through the ponds like this. Although I, we might avoid it. Might go just in between them, I'm not sure. Glistening bubble. A bubble shed from the back of a creature sits at the edge of the lake, brine curling around its base. Ugh. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, it's another mucus bubble. We've already got one. Um, hold on. I feel like I'm leaving this behind, this place back here. Silt bank. A bank which skirts along the edge of a large, shadowed pool. Poisoned remains. Along the edge of the larger pools, the shells and skeletons of creatures loom out of the silt, victims of the toxic brine. Lake Causeway. This rise projects out towards the vast brine lake to the east, cutting between deep pools. Um, let's not go north just yet. Let's go east. Pool network. Brine pools mark the plain on all sides, densely packed around the vast lake. And I want to look at this lake. Ooh. Fast creature. That's totally new. These creatures are so fast. Their dark coloring makes them hard to see, but let's keep track of them. These rapid swimming lobster-like creatures have dark shells with very large translucent tails. How do they move so fast? crab-like creature. Different individuals of this species seem to have varying sizes of bubbles on their backs. Are they carrying oxygen in there? Deep crater. This hole cuts deep into the bedrock of the plain. Could this be caused by a seep? It looks more like an impact crater. An impact crater. An impact crater. How would that happen? I mean... <laughs> I just had a thought that's probably really silly. I guess it could mean that this planet didn't have an ocean on it. And like, I don't know, meteors hit. And it's an impact crater. And then it got water all over it. A lot of water. But how would that happen? I don't think you can just turn on the faucet, leave it on for a couple billion years, and get an ocean on a planet, can you? Brine shore. Here the complex of pools melts into the lake, which shines with a toxic intensity. Can anything live out there? This brine lake is vast. I can't see the other side. What might be hiding within its toxic fog? Do you think life might survive out there? Yeah, life can survive in incredibly toxic places. It's true that this planet has shifted my ideas about what is survivable. Perhaps there is something out there, waiting to be discovered. New species logged brine eaters. I'll log these creatures as brine eaters. 
You can take a look at my observations back at base. Branching feathery fronds which grow alongside brine pools, carefully dipping their matted and stained limbs in and out of the brine. This is a sample candidate, but it's also in the brine, so we should be sort of quick. A faint pulsing glow like lightning in a storm can be seen beneath the cloudy brine. What did we just grab? Brine shell. A glowing shell found among the brine stained with chemicals. Brine waves. Something out in the dark is sending slow waves to this burning beach. What could live out there? Ah, oh, this is the start of the lake. We can go out into the lake, my god. I'm scared. Do I want to do that yet? Can we? Brine Lake. The water is a blinding, milky white flow in the headlamps. We can go there. It's not any worse than the bloom. Let's do it. <laughs>